Hello and welcome to Confidence on Camera. It's my YouTube presentation. Does anybody do YouTube presentations? Well, I do. There's a few of them in my channel. Go and find the others. But for now, let's stick with Confidence on Camera. I'll see you in a sec. Roll the titles. Okay, wicked, you're back. You're ready to learn how to be confident on camera. Uh, it, actually, it's not gonna make you confident on camera. What we're gonna do in this session is we're going to take a look at tips that you can use right now to become more confident. Or, if you wanna look at it in a different way, uh, little things you can do that if you add them all together will give you a little bit more confidence, a little bit more confidence, a little bit more confidence uh, until you feel like a rock star. Which is where we all, which is how how we all want to feel, right? I think that's a, I think that's fair to say. That's what I want, how I want to feel. All right, let's get on with it. Tip number one. Tip number one is to remove the equipment challenge. When I say remove the equipment challenge, what I mean is a lot of people come to me and they say, Matt, what camera do I need to make better video? And I say to them all the time, like, what do you mean make better video? How much video are you creating already? And they say. Well, I'm not creating any really. And I say, are you consistent at all with creating nothing? And they say, yeah, I'm pretty com consistent at not creating anything. Um, so then I say to them, well, why not just get started with your mobile phone? Now, if you want to watch a video about how to create better video with your mobile phone, there's another one on YouTube that I've got. It's about half an hour. It'll give you all the tips. In fact, there's a few of them that cross over with this confidence on camera session. Um, but yes, I'd say get started with your mobile phone first and then move on to something else. And the other kind of equipment challenges I see that people put in front of them is, what lighting do I need? What sound do I need? Uh, what's the best location to do it? How long should my videos be? Like there's all these things, all these excuses that people put in there where, oh, it says remove the equipment challenge, but my face is in the way, I've just noticed. I wanna have to put the slide over this, edit it out. Um, remove the equipment challenge. The first tip is remove the equipment challenge. Let's... Tip number two then, Tip number two is to stand up. Now you might think, well, Matt, you're sitting down doing this. But remember I said at the start, like, if you do individual bits uh, to improve your confidence as you go, you'll be more confident long-term. Uh, it, it will all add up is what I'm trying to say, really. Well, standing up is one of those things. Like for me, I'm confident on camera now. Like I'm perfectly happy doing these things. Um, I still make mistakes like everybody else. Uh, but I'm confident doing them. But if I want to be in a power position, if I thought about like, sometimes people will describe like their the best environment in which they can be the most confident. And for me, that would be standing up doing this kind of presentation. In fact, when I'm doing these presentations, I love to be on stage. I love to be wandering around stage, giving these kind of presentations because I pace around all over the place. Um, standing up is also, a power position, right? Like it's a, it's a, it's a strong, powerful position. Um, it opens up your diaphragm, so it's like a theatrical thing. It opens up your diaphragm so you can project your voice further, all that kind of good stuff. So standing up is one of the things I definitely recommend if you're trying to get started with building your confidence. Another thing, if you're thinking about live video as a great example, is you can go live to yourself and practice. Now practicing is key to being confident on camera because actually like anything, practice makes progress. So the more you can practice, the better you will get and the more comfortable you will feel. So what I tell people to do is if, they, if they're getting started and they really wanna uh, get started and, and feel comfortable, then do a Facebook Live to yourself. And you can do this by just changing your uh, privacy settings on Facebook to only me. Now you do have to remember to turn that back to public or friends, whatever it, it was on before. Otherwise everything after that point is only me. But you can practice a Facebook Live to only me. Once you do that, what happens is you, uh, it feels just like a normal Facebook Live. You go, you go live, it counts down, etc. cetera. Um, but you've got an audience of one, right? It's a party by myself, that kind of thing. So uh, just remember you can go live to only me. Practice with that, and if you like it, actually, you could turn the privacy settings to public or friends, whatever it was before, and then all your uh, friends and family and everything else will see it, you, you know, the public will see it if, it, if that's a setting. So it's not a waste. It's more like a pre-recorded video at that point. You won't have an audience for it. So go live to yourself is the next one. Stick to one topic. So I definitely see this as a, 
uh, something that people uh, struggle with. A lot of people say, well, I, I waffle when I do videos, whether it's pre-recorded or live video, it doesn't really matter. I waffle, I go all over the place on a tangent somewhere, right? So the easiest thing to do is pick a topic and it doesn't have to be like a super complex topic, just a really simple topic. And then write a couple of bullet points about that topic. Now, when I do this, I use a post-it note, I write the topic at the top of my post-it note, and then I'll write three bullet points down about that particular topic. So I've always got a reminder of what my topic was. Believe me, when you go live and when you do video, you can forget the original topic. Sometimes I press go live and I forget the topic before it's even started, before the countdown's finished. So for me, someone that's done 500 Facebook Lives in the last three years, uh, just on my profile, let alone everywhere else, um, I still use this method to this day. So if post-it note, topic at the top, and then just a couple of bullet points down. You know, I'd say three is a good point. Uh, it could be one. If you're doing like a top 10, you might have bullet points for the top 10 list or something like that. Um, but post-it notes is where, it at, where it's at because it keeps you on topic. You can meander off somewhere if you're telling a story as long as it's related to the topic. And also it's a little bit about people's time and attention, right? Like you're, you're taking their time and attention by delivering wh whatever it is, whatever the video is about. Um, so just appreciate that, right? You don't want to say them to come in and you've promised them to talk about tennis and then you're talking about the dinner you had yesterday. It's just gonna put them off. Their attention span is not that long and off they go. Okay, cool. So I think we've labored that point enough. Practice with friends then. So we talked about practicing with yourself. So you could practice using only me. Another thing that I think is really great for building your own confidence and for having somebody looking back at you is practice with your friends. So you can do this on services like, in fact, I'm only gonna tell you about StreamYard. No, I won't. I'll tell you about StreamYard as my favorite Facebook Live service because you can stream to multiple destinations. So I absolutely love StreamYard as, as the platform of choice for, for interviews and that kind of thing. Up to six guests you can have in there. Stream, uh, you can stream to multiple destinations. Or you could use something like Zoom, the very popular Zoom. Great, uh, great platform where you can also stream to Facebook Live uh, or invite more people into that as well. But I would say really, if I was to choose any of them, I would say StreamYard is probably my favorite at this point uh, to practice with friends. And, and like I say, you can get a bunch of people in there. Uh, in this example with the screenshot that you can see, I'm, I'm practicing with Stephanie. Um, actually, what happened was Stephanie came to me and she said, Matt, I've, I've got a, a Facebook Live to do with a, another um, person in my industry and she's got a massive audience. I'm a bit concerned about it. I'm a bit nervous about it. And Stephanie's done loads of videos, but I said to her, well, uh, she's in my membership to be fair. So I, I, I always give more of my time to people in my membership. But um, I said to her, yeah, great, we can do this. I, I tell you what, we'll go on Zoom and we'll practice this thing. Um, uh, in fact, it was StreamYard, as you can see. Uh, we'll go on StreamYard and uh, we'll stream it to our group. And she was like, what, what do you mean? We can't practice to real people. And I was like, that's exactly how you're gonna practice to real people. Because when you, when you get in StreamYard, you're gonna realize that actually, it's just me and you, we're just chatting. And it's, it's no real different than if we were sat here chatting, having a, a coffee or whatever. So that's how you can get some confidence. Of course, uh, when you're on your own, you've just got your camera lens or your phone or whatever. Um, but having friends around will help you get used to that, to talking to a camera. And then eventually, of course, you can get going on your own. So another great confidence tip there. Oh, and if you've just got your mobile phone, then get a picture of your friend and stick it next to your camera lens. That's an always, always a good one as well. So then you can feel like you're talking to your best friends. Uh, that's, that's, I really like that tip. I got that from somebody, uh, somebody else told me that and I thought, what a wonderful way to look at it. Um, so practice with stories, this is another good way to get started. Uh, when we're talking about stories here, we're talking about Facebook stories, Instagram stories. If you practice with them, they're short form, so you know, 30 to 60 seconds. Um, you're, you're, you can do effects on them, you can have a bit of fun with them, you can put some music on. Uh, you could go on TikTok as well and even practice on there, that's another good platform to use. Uh, it's just short form content, it disappears after a while on stories. Um, after 24 hours, it will disappear unless you save it. So it's a great opportunity to, for you to try and see what it feels like. And the other great thing about stories is the opportunity is different. So if you think about your Facebook wall as a place where you put content, 
20% um, of the people have their sound on, whereas on stories, 80% of the people have their sound on. So there's a much bigger opportunity for you to practice your confidence on camera on a Facebook story or, or an Instagram story or whatever. Okay, so confidence on camera, tip number, I don't even know what tip number we're on, it must be on seven or eight or something, uh, is join a challenge. Now, we do this every single month. We do a Facebook Live challenge every single month. Uh, on Facebook, if you go to uh, Facebook, uh, in fact, I'll, there's a link in the comments for my uh, Facebook page. If you go to that Facebook page there, I advertise the Facebook Live Challenge on there. Just like the page and you'll see it, um, I always advertise it kind of the week before, but it's the last week of the month. It's the last Monday of the month. Uh, that's usually when we're doing it now. So Facebook Live Challenge, the great thing about joining a, a live challenge like this is that you are surrounded with people just like you that are just getting started on camera. Uh, or maybe actually I invite people, my membership uh, members to come in and do it again if they've, a lot of them come through the Facebook Live Challenge. So I invite them to come back and do it again and just to, to practice being consistent. Um, but it's just a great environment to uh, start to feel confident. You know, being around other people, getting encouragement from other people. I give you a task every single day so that you don't even have to think about the task. We don't talk about equipment or gear or anything like that. We do in the, in the Q&As at the end of the day, if you want to, but the main focus of the, of the challenge is really just to build that confidence. Because I know, and I've seen it now, we've done this five, to date, to the, the recording of this video, I've done five of these challenges, and from seeing people from day one through to day five, there's an absolutely massive transformation. Like, it makes them going from super nervous to okay. Not like super confident, they're not gonna go and do a public speaking session in front of 20,000 people, uh, but they feel more confident um, hitting that button of fear, uh, which is what we call uh, the go live button. So joining a challenge. Another thing that I see people really confused, uh, really concerned about when it comes to doing uh, video in, in general is is mistakes. What if I make a mistake? What will people think if I make a mistake? And this really dents their confidence before they even get started. So what I'd say to people is, um, you know, you can just own your mistakes. And there's two things you can do about it. There's, number one, you can acknowledge the mistake. So you can say, oh, I just made a mistake. It wasn't that funny. Or like when we were doing this, when the first time I started recording this, a door went which happens all the time. I, I used to do Facebook Live Challenge, uh, Facebook Lives every day for six months, and um, the guy in the office that I worked in used to knock the door every time, and it didn't matter what time of day I did my Facebook Live, he would knock the door every time during that Facebook Live. So I just made it a thing, I made it kind of part of the Facebook Live, oh, here's Tom again knocking my door, you know? So you can acknowledge it and you can own that mistake, or, the other thing you can do, of course, is you can ignore it, just completely ignore it. Sometimes mistakes happen and they mean a lot to you internally, but actually to the viewer, they don't really recognize them. They don't see them, right? One of the uh, good examples of this is, is pausing during a video. When you pause, sometimes you feel like the gap is about 10 seconds long. And I've seen people sort of trip over themselves because of that pause, and they're like, oh, sorry about that, didn't, didn't mean to leave that pause in there. Uh, but nobody notice, nobody notices. You know, like, I've watched videos back before where I thought there was a big pause trying to find it, and I just can't find it. It's just not there, it doesn't exist. So you can own your mistakes, or you can, uh, sorry, you can acknowledge your mistakes, or you can just completely ignore them. Um, I actually don't like the word mistakes. I think what happens is uh, you, uh, things happen, during your live, during uh, your videos and that kind of thing, and they're just opportunities to learn. Mistakes are really opportunities to learn, so, but it doesn't really work very well. You're saying, oh, I just, I just made an opportunity to learn. <laughs> it doesn't have the same ring to it as a mistake, right? So we're gonna keep calling it a mistake, but it is an opportunity to learn and move on. Okay, one of the other confidence on camera tips, believe it or not, is to have fun with it. Now, certainly with the Facebook Live Challenge that we do, People do have fun with it in the end. They start to feel like it's something they're enjoying. Um, and so you've got to do that as well. You've got to try and look. 
I'm not, I'm not going to tell you you have to do it, right? What I'm going to tell you is it comes with time. You start to have fun with it. Um, this particular image that you can see on screen, you'll see that I've got antlers uh, for uh, at, at the top of my head there. Now that's in my living room, just down the, down the way down there. Um, and what happened is I, I did a Facebook Live and the antlers were above me and I didn't really notice. I didn't even look at my environment. I just did it and then someone said, Matt, it looks like you've got antlers coming out of your head. And at the time I, I thought, oh, what an idiot. What an idiot I look like. Of course, my, my brain said to me, oh, you, you know, you look like an idiot. It was telling me all the insecurity stuff that I have inside of my head. Um, but actually what I did is I acknowledged it. And I, I laughed about it. And then I said, well, actually, I'm going to make that a thing now. So every time I did a Facebook Live down the other side of the living room, I made sure I stood exactly underneath those antlers because it was um, it was thumb stopping or it, it was a pattern interrupt for people to see it because some people just want to come along and say, hey, you've got antlers on, in your head, um, but it stops them and makes them uh, engage with me as well. So that was a, a useful thing to do. So you can have fun with it, even with things that at the time made you feel a little bit stupid or, or you thought, oh, that's a mistake. I didn't check my environment, that kind of thing. Right? I just enjoyed... Uh, the the situation and what we were doing and then jfdi i'm just going to say just do it but i'll leave your leave it for your imagination to to figure out the rest of that but just do it you know like i've put some screenshots here of lives that i've done throughout um throughout my time doing facebook lives and there's lives, there's one there in the desert in Las Vegas. Uh, in fact, there's a couple from Vegas. In the desert, in the hotel, uh, in my living room, there's some in the airport there. At, at VidCon, we went to VidCon in, um, in LA last year. Uh, so there's lots of things going on here where I've just gone on and done it. Why? Because it's more important to me to share my story with the world, to share my genius with the world, and to help people out. That's what's more important. And when you can just get on with it and do it, actually, um, over time, you start to feel more confident. It's definitely a practice makes progress thing. It's something you can build up over time. So let's just uh, summarise these. Again, my, my images, my video is in the way. I didn't really think this out too well when I used the eCam to record this. Uh, but I'm going to read them out to you. So the first one was remove the equipment challenge. Uh, get rid of all the tech and all the gear and any, any kind of excuses you've got there. Stand up when recording was the second one. Uh, go live to yourself, a great way to practice. And you can watch those back if you, if you feel comfortable with it. A lot of people when they start it don't want to hear their own voice or watch themselves back. That's fine too. Uh, but if you want to, that's a good way to see that actually you do make sense and you are legible. Like people can understand what you're saying. Um, stick to one topic so you don't waffle. So write a topic down, stick it on a post-it note and stick to one topic. Practice with your friends. Uh, it's a great opportunity to do, to, um, to get going with, with making video. Practice with stories, Facebook stories, Instagram stories. Have some fun with those. Totally different medium to say Facebook Lives or pre-recorded videos. You can have a little bit more fun. People don't mind stickers all over the place and tags in there and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, join a challenge. We've got a Facebook Live challenge. It's in the comments. You can join that uh, any point and we'll get you in the next Facebook Live challenge. Uh, own your mistakes. Uh, ign ignore them if you need to or acknowledge them and make them part of it. Uh, have fun with what you're doing. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. And then just JFDI. Let's call it that. JFDI because I don't want to make this a um, the kind of YouTube video that YouTube doesn't like. So I'm not going to swear. All right. So that's it, guys. That's confidence on camera wrapped up. Now, a couple of things I'm going to share with you, just ways you can connect with me, because I've, I've been forgetting to do this as we've been going along. So let's just do that. OK, so here's a few ways you can connect with me. I have a Facebook page that you can see there, Real King of Video. You can join my free Facebook community, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash King of Video. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel. You're here on the channel. You may as well subscribe and hit the notification bell while you're here. And the Facebook Live Challenge is always on that link as well. And then lastly, if you want to work with me, you can take a look at my King of Video membership site. Again, the link is in the comments, um, but this is the kind of stuff that we put in there. I'm not going to go on about that too much on this channel. All right. So that's what's available. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. That's what's available. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, I'd love to hear more from uh, the people that are watching these YouTube videos. It's a very uh, anonymous platform at times. So uh, leave a comment, um, connect with us on the other platforms, other channels, all that kind of good stuff. Like the video and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.